This is a continuation of the previous video where we had done some introduction to game hacking with the DEF CON 32 game and the labs and challenges that they had put together. We had used the cheat engine utility, which you could fire up here and then attach to any game or process you would like. It's a very cool dynamic debugger, but in this video we will not end up using cheat engine. We will instead use a tool called DNSpy, and that will act as our .NET debugger and assembly editor. This is for C Sharp, kind of working behind it, but the original DNSpy, if you track it down online on GitHub, is actually discontinued. You'll want to be sure to use DNSpy X, that is the continuation of the DNSpy project, and that has this available with their forked repository, where you can download the releases and get this up in action if you'd like. If you'd like to follow along, I do recommend you download from the releases, and all it is is just a zip file with the static binary included, so we can go ahead and get that ready for us. I've got that in my downloads folder, just going to extract the zip archive and then create a shortcut so we can easily access it. Now with DNSpy on my desktop, we can fire up the game, and remember this is a Unity game, so we'll be working with C Sharp, some of the managed assemblies behind it, but where we left off in the previous video, we just wrapped up levels 1, 2, and 3. In this video, we will want to go tackle levels 4, 5, and 6, so we'll go to the level select option here, and then get back to level four. This will spawn us here on this map with our usual unicorn raft here, and he says, fine, you can have it, with the goal and objective to be this flag. We'll want to go walk and grab that, but the floor falls out from underneath us, and all the barrels fall on us, and it, hey, it says, have fun down here, good luck, you're never going to be able to get out, you won't be able to do anything, you can't jump out here and get to the end of the level. We can climb these stairs, but it's not going to be able to get us back to the end where we want to be able to reach that checkered goal over there. So our objective with level four is to try and figure out how we would be able to get past that falling floor, in which case we can open up the folder, the directory with all of the contents for the game itself, and we do have this game hacking gg underscore data directory. Now this has a lot of stuff in it, but what we want to start looking at is the managed folder, and that'll include an assembly c sharp.dll. This is one of the critical game files that defines a lot of the logic. Hey, a lot of the different classes, a lot of the code behind it, and maybe, just maybe, we could actually manipulate it. Sort of patch the game contents and make it do whatever we really want it to do instead. All it takes is rebuilding and modifying that DLL. So what I'm going to do is actually make a copy of this. I'll right click to copy and then I'll simply paste because I want to have a modified rendition. So I'm just going to rename this to hyphen modified and we'll have another copy that we can just simply call the original. So we have a save backup and we can make changes to whatever we'll end up kind of swapping in place for the actual assembly C sharp DLL. Then we'll go ahead and open up DNSpy and with DNSpy started, we can actually go open an assembly here, control O to open. Navigate back into that folder for game hacking, the game hacking data, and we'll modify the modified DLL that we kind of reserve for ourselves. Let's open that, and you'll see it gets added down here on the left side navigation to see it in the assembly explorer. Now we can expand this if we click into the arrows here, pull these down, and you might have seen DNSpy in plenty of other videos on this channel. Ultimately, we want to go explore what might be in the sort of hyphen rendition here with the curly braces to denote, hey, here are a lot of the different classes behind the logic and game functionality. You can see things here like anti-cheat, you can see things like health text, like laser turret, main menu, and down here you might even be able to see pitfall. So if I click into that, it'll start to decompile it and the text will be visible over on this right side. This is the C-sharp behind what will be used in the Unity engine to run the game. So take a look at some of the logic here. We've got a function that runs as it starts. We also see one called on trigger enter that takes in a parameter and you can see that included in the parentheses here for a collider type object name being called other. And the logic here is checking if the other property your game object that's passed into it, if it can compare the tag being the player, well then all of this code block will follow. Apparently the floor will be set active to false, meaning okay, it's no longer going to be functioning, presumably. Floor 2 done the very same, and then an array of objects from this pit objects. Probably things that it's just trying to carry or hold on to. It goes through in a loop to actually set each of those to active, enabling gravity and having them just fall down like we saw. And then it will destroy the flag which is peculiar. 
We don't want that to happen, so what if we just kind of remove that? You can see down below all the other properties, sort of, hey, private or public class fields that are included, again, being its copy of a floor, floor two, pit objects, and the flag. But what if we could just sort of modify this snippet of code? If we right click, we could actually edit an entire class or this method. Hotkey there is Control Shift E. So let's do that. And then this will start to decompile and get to that function for us and allow us to actually interact with it and make changes. Like now we can type here. We can do whatever we would want, but all we really wanna do is remove this logic so that if the player were to collide with it, it won't just disappear or go away. So what I'm gonna do is have this all selected and then backspace to delete it so that this function basically does nothing. Not adding a collision logic for the player walking onto this pitfall. If I shrink this window down on the bottom right, you can see this compile button and that's all that we really need. It will now basically knop out or remove the functionality of that function. With that, we can go ahead and save this module. Click that in file. It can use the same path that it's already in using our assembly C sharp modified. Let's click okay. And once that's done, we'll go back to our folder that we had open, knowing that, okay, this modified one is what we wanna put in place of what the game will load, the assembly C sharp DLL file. So I'll delete this old one, make a copy of this, control C, control V on my keyboard. And now let me rename this. Let's remove the modified suffix so that it just has the original name assembly C sharp. With that in action, let's go try the game again and see what level four does. Level select, level four. And now that we're dropped in, I can start to walk with WASD, but the floor is not gonna go away from us. That's pretty awesome. We've patched that functionality out of the game. Now, when I try to go grab the flag though, it doesn't do anything. Uh, maybe that wasn't active either. So that doesn't really help. We can keep shooting our unicorn raft friend, but that's not gonna do anything for us. So let's go take another look in the code and see what we might be missing. You might have seen it when we had DN Spy open, but there is a whole nother object or class definition here called pit complete. And presumably this is when, okay, it lands on the ground and it's done working through the action of a falling and having the floor just fall beneath you. But if you actually read the function here, it ends up checking if the player collides with it and this is not completed, that exclamation point in the two ampersands to the logical and, it says the completion feedback will probably play a sound, the global Unity engine will instantiate a new object being a pit flag, and then it sets its own completion variable to true. So it creates a new flag rather than the one that's just displayed in the middle of the field. Is this something that we'll actually end up walking into? Let's get back to the game and just see what happens if we keep walking around and maybe this sort of checkered finale or goal here is maybe just an invisible wall to note and trigger. Oh, yep, okay, the flag shows up and then the kind of latch hole opens so we can complete that level. Once we grab this flag, I can press I to open my inventory and we'll see there is our pit flag with the text being, you should play basketball, okay, cutesy. Let's get back to this and go complete level four. Excellent, now we can move on to level five. Unicorn Raph says, okay, bud, I'm done with this game. You aren't getting out of here alive for this one. And this is weird. You can see like this red force field surrounding it and the turret back over there. Uh, I'm gonna assume trying to get the flag, that's probably just gonna kill me, isn't it? Yep, okay, that killed me. <laughs> so back in DN Spy, let's see what we can do here. Looking at the other classes that we have available to us, do we see anything that sounds like, oh, the turret, yep, okay, laser turret, laser turret race, maybe that one is interesting. Let's take a look at the logic. We see this on enable and on disable function to do some things with an event stop or start listening. Uh, we also see a fire laser, okay, that sounds about right. And what's the info here? Player health will grab the player, actually getting the object and retrieving their health property. It instantiates a new object of a laser and then he plays the sound and checks if it does kill and if it does, it kills the player. Hmm, okay, so once again, pretty simple. We could just go ahead and remove all this logic. This is the function just for fire laser though. If we keep scrolling down, we can see that's actually called on another event collider. Another trigger enter when there is a collision with the player being the other object it's up against. So maybe this is what we could patch out. Either of these two will work. This is kind of the fun flexibility here. Let me see if we can decompile and then remove this logic. Done and done. We'll hit compile down on the bottom right. We'll go ahead and save this. 
We'll hot swap, remove the old actual thing that it's loaded, and then make a copy to rename it to the proper assembly C sharp file that it loads. Now I actually wanna stop and restart the game because honestly, we wanna have it load this new DLL. Let's start it up once again. Let's get to our level select, choose level five. And now we've removed the collision for us hitting that sort of red force field and the laser turret won't be able to do anything. So can I just jump into this pit? And yes, I can. With that, I can grab the flag and I'll hit I on my keyboard. You can see there's the next flag. Okay, now you have God mode. With that, we can, ow, the unicorn raft hurt me. Let's jump out of here and then complete level five and move on to level six. Okay, now we have all right, cheater. Let's see if you can get past the ancient guard. Without a fish, he won't budge. And I ate all the fish. Okay, thank you, Unicorn Raft. Uh, we have an apple in the middle of the map here. Can I get that? Yep, okay, now that's probably added to my inventory. There it is. Apple, notably not a fish. Thanks for that. So this giant statue of a cat, it looks like, this ancient guard, I'm assuming this sort of a uh, yellow pad here. Whoa, okay acting like a trampoline, just like pushing me away as I interact with it. We need to actually get a fish in our inventory, it sounds like. So let's go back to the code once again. At this point, I'm sure you get the gist, right? And this is pretty simple. Hey, small stuff, small tweaks within our DN spy. So do you see this class has fish? That sounds like what we wanna drill down into. We've got another collision check here. If it's the player that's gonna walk up against it, it checks if you have an inventory available. And if that doesn't go down that condition, if it were to continue onward and not return out of this function, it'll end up checking fish items being set as a property and variable, getting that from your inventory, if it contains fish. If the fish items count as greater than zero, then it will walk through all of this, in which case we get the feedback, it will instantiate the fish flag, builds out some completion objects, and then checks something for anti-cheat warnings just as well. Hmm, we'll see the anti-cheat in action in the next video, I think, but what we can do, pretty simple, is just, hey, manipulate this logic. Change this condition to be something greater than or equal to zero, since we don't have a fish, and there's presumably no way to get one, or again, we could just kind of remove this block and keep all this code and functionality intact. So let's edit this once again. Remember, you could do a couple different things here. You could just change this condition to greater than or equal to zero and keep that logic branch. Or if we wanted to, we could totally just remove the if statement and hey, clean up that block of code. You wanna make sure to remove the return statement because that would end up finishing the function. Granted, that's fine because we don't really need this debug log anymore. So it's totally cool being the end of the function since there's nothing else really there. So you could keep that functionality or again, manipulate this however else you would like. Let's compile that, save the module, and this is all pretty simple and easy, right? We're just manipulating code that we can see basically in plain text because it is C-sharp assemblies, and that's the benefit of this Unity rendition here. Let's click OK to compile that, hot swap these files as usual, and let's restart our game. Now back in level six, we do not have a fish in our inventory, but if we go walk against this sort of gold pedestal platform spot there, let's see if we can kind of get by the ancient guard and the big cat here. Fingers crossed. <laughs> all right, yeah, there we go. It just turns into the flag, removes and puts up all these other notes here. And then we get, oh, no cheating allowed beyond this point. Okay. Uh, we could move on to what would be level seven and we'll save that for the next video, but now we can, it says no more cheating. Cheat again and you're out of here, so we might need to go play with that anti-cheat class, but we've got another objective for level seven. For the moment though, we're done. We did levels four, five, and six, and it was just some simple patching, a couple modified and manipulated, hey, logic within the code, but that's something that we could easily do thanks to the way this game was written. It being a game built in the Unity engine with some C-sharp managed assemblies, we could totally crank through it and do what we want within DN Spy. With that, we're all done. Quick video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you do all those YouTube algorithm things. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.